you take straight. any blame for inflation, Could you just, Mr. President? I take any blame for inflation? No. Why not? Because it was already there when I got here, man. Remember what the economy was like when I got here? Thank you. That was President Biden responding to a reporter at a town hall asking him if he takes any blame for inflation. According to a new Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs research poll, 37 percent of Democrats say they want Biden to seek a second term, which is down from 52 percent in the weeks before last year's midterm elections. So first, I think we should fact check Biden's claim there that uh, he, he bears no blame for inflation. Uh, his rescue plan, I mean, you can say it was necessary, that it had good effects. I'm not sure I would make those claims, but a lot of people would make those claims. But I think it's pretty incontrovertible that it contributed to raising inflation, that spending that massive amount of money uh, it, it was partly responsible for inflation. Of course, you know, spending tons of money is not unique to Biden. Trump did it as well, as did all previous presidents. Again, maybe you can argue if you want to argue that it was necessary given the unprecedented COVID pandemic, but it definitely had something to do with inflation. So for him to say that, oh, all the inflation was there before I took off, I mean, that's not even true. Like, inflation was rising while he's in office. So anyway, that doesn't make any sense, but... <laughs> well, I mean, a little bit to disagree with you, Robbie. Uh, uh, to me, the problem was not that the money was given to families who, you know, we could argue about whether or not they needed it. It was that money was given to families at a time when the goods that they may have used that money to buy were not in the marketplace, right? Too much money chasing too few goods, right? And that was because of supply chain issues, which were the result of the pandemic. And, you know, I, I do have to give President Biden credit. I, the CHIPS Act, for example, um, is was directly designed to prevent future generations from having to deal with supply chain issues like the ones we have been dealing with all along throughout the pandemic. So, you know, I, I, I think he deserves a little bit more credit. You know, we had a jobs report come out last week, 517,000 new jobs added last month, which was three times what Wall Street was predicting. You know, that how come he doesn't get any credit for that, right? If he's responsible for inflation, well, then he's responsible for these jobs as well. Um, so I, I think on that front, it's not so much the money. It's that the money was given at a time when the, there were too few goods available of the of the sorts that these families might have spent this money on. Um, I will say, I, I, I also think, you know, to, for these, for Democratic voters to be less inclined to support him for a 2024 run after his astonishing performance and success during the midterms. I, I think that's so ungrateful. I mean, he's done a lot of things I don't necessarily support. I don't think that are not, you know, things that I think are important. He's done a lot of things that I think are very bad. But if you're a Democratic voter, right, he, he tried to push through student loan forgiveness. He's abandoned policing the border, which these are all things, you know, Democrats are supposed to support. The economy is getting better slowly, but surely lots of jobs. You know, it seems to me a little bit um, like what exactly is their is their complaint? Is it it must be that they don't think he's likely to succeed against a potential uh, Republican candidate? I mean, that must be it. Do you agree with me? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, I, I've said this so many times. The goal to, of, of replacing Biden, replacing him with who? Everyone else in the Democratic side is less popular than Biden. You're right that even though I, I tremendously disagree with these policies, Biden somewhat unexpectedly or somewhat contrary to expectations, is certainly conservative expectations, but I think mainstream expectations as well, had a pretty stunningly uh, positive uh, midterm performance, you know, just just back last November. So to turn around and say, we want to dump him in favor of someone else, again, again, who? There isn't that figure. There's no one, like it or not, there's no one more popular on the on the Democratic side than Joe Biden himself. So I don't know what these poll respondents are necessarily thinking. Maybe it's just kind of a wishful thinking. Like, ideally, we would have someone who's younger than Joe Biden and a bit more vigorous and, and better at, at responding to things. Maybe Democratic voters wish he would more prior, or the people, at least in this poll, wish he would prioritize even more. Um, I, maybe it's sort of cultural or social. They, you know, he's not, he's not liberal or progressive enough in terms of woke type things for, uh, you know, for educated elite Democratic voters, I, I would, I, I would understand their frustration there, you know, the kind of people who prefer um, Elizabeth Warren or, or, or you know, the, the Gillibrand or something like that. I, I could see them wanting someone other than Biden, but that's very short-sighted thinking because I don't think a figure like that 
would have nearly the same likelihood of, of Joe Biden to be reelected. I mean, it's going to be a it's going to be a tough battle depending on who the Republican challenger is, right? If, I mean, I think it'll be a tough battle regardless. If it's Trump again, probably that's probably Biden's preferred matchup, to be frank, because he beat him once. But we don't know if that's going to be the case. I think also uh, President Biden very cleverly has moved the first primary state from right New Hampshire, Iowa, all these places where people like Bernie Sanders, where progressives have you know a real foothold, right? Because these are sort of white, you know, the Democratic populations there are overwhelmingly white and overwhelmingly progressive. He very cleverly has moved it to South Carolina, where he is extremely popular, and we know that Black voters are much more moderate, much less likely to take a chance on somebody with progressive policies. Um, we can debate why that is. But, you know, so he's sort of, in a way, uh, that was a very clever move. I, I think, you know, it, that doesn't just get rid of, you know, a, a, a compelling challenge from someone like Senator Sanders. I mean, Pete Buttigieg was extremely unpopular with black voters, could really not gain any traction with them. You know, that so, so, so a lot of people who you would have thought of as potential up and coming characters, candidates, um, you know, in the old regime, it's, it's, it, it, this is going to have a huge impact on the be early early stages of the Democratic primary. I mean, I think in a very positive way, I think black voters, you know, Democrats used to understand these people as their base. They no longer do. They've leaned in too heavily, I think, on college educated voters. So this really has shifted the, that sort of center of gravity back to where it should be. And but that's going to help President Biden a lot. And it's going to help him in selling his candidacy because other people, I mean, Governor, you know, Governor Newsom, I mean, is he going to be compelling to black voters in South Carolina? It's, it's hard to imagine. Right. After, and after the Iowa caucus embarrassed itself last time around with the, you know, the <laughs> remember the tabulation errors and, you know, not actually knowing who'd won, having to wait to report your like the the total from your precinct. And it was it was just like yeah. such a disaster. I, I can understand um, it, they deserve to be punished, frankly. It was time for them to lose that that front uh, front of the pack status after that total debacle, even setting aside the representation issues with Iowa not being a particularly representative state. Um, they, they can't. <laughs> the, the whole, I think the whole Democratic Party was embarrassed um, by that performance. But you're absolutely right that it does play to Joe Biden's strengths. But look, I don't, I think he's going to run for re-election. I don't think he's going to face any serious challenge whatsoever. Maybe some, there will be a, a, a token um, uh, mm. Democratic Socialist Bernie type Opposition. I, I, I don't think Bernie will do that, but remains to be seen. But someone in that mold, perhaps maybe someone outside the political system. You know, we've interviewed Marianne Williamson uh, on the show repeatedly, maybe someone like her. But I, I don't think Joe Biden is going to face a—I think he will run for re-election. He will not face serious resistance um, within the party, because ultimately the, the, the party apparatus knows that he's their best chance to retain control of the White House. So they'd have to contend with Kamala Harris, who is much, much less popular than Joe Biden, who is, you know, divisive and, and et cetera, which that's going to be a problem they're going to have to contend with eventually. But they don't, they don't have to contend with it uh, in 2024. They can just stick with Joe Biden. And, I, and he's going to seek it, because the reality is people just don't no, like no one in our political system wants to give up power. You have people in their 80s and 90s still seeking re-election, still seeking office. It's a gerontocracy. We're absolutely governed by by <laughs> historically unprecedented, unprecedentedly elderly Americans, and, and Joe Biden is is one of many in that position. He's not. I, I don't see any reason why he would uh, why we, he would give up the throne now when it's likely to be his again. It, it, it's, it's it's not for for certain. It's going to be a battle, but you know he's got a coin flips chance of being president again. Of Democrats still controlling the White House, so they're going to take that. They're going to take those odds. There's no way they don't. They'd be idiots not to. Yeah, I mean, the Democratic bench does seem quite narrow. And just adding support to this idea that moving the first primary to South Carolina was part of a kind of an almost unspoken pledge that he plans to run and plans to win. Um, um, uh, House Democrat Jim Clyburn, in an extensive interview, um, when he was asked about this, he said, well, you know, he never talked to me about it, right? Which is he sort of you would think he would be the first person you would approach, right, to talk to about this. Um, and, and he, you know, this was not a conversation that President Biden had with him. It was sort of a decision he made on his own. So, um, you know, <laughs> take that a, a, as you will, as a sign of what you will. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we will be back in just a minute. More Rising. Stay tuned. <laughs> 